Redshift 2 shader is finally here in Redshift 3.6 and it's really easy to quickly add it into any scene that you have created or any objects or anything and instantly get this really cool cartoon cell shaded kind of borderland style look. So in this tutorial I show you my techniques and some tips and tricks uh, into getting the most out of the tune shader with the least amount of effort on your part. A really quick and easy way to get these really cool stylized looks. I'm really enjoying it and I can't wait to see what you guys make. Hey what's up? I'm Derek Kirk of Effectatron and I'm running on very little sleep right now. Our, uh, <laughs> our newborn daughter came. She's very uh, happy and healthy. Actually she's got a little bit of a cold which is probably why we're not sleeping. Well right now it's uh, the saddest thing ever to hear a little bitty newborn uh, sniffle. Uh, so, but I just want to do a real quick tutorial today. We're not going to go a deep dive into Tune Shader or anything, but I do want to show you a really, really easy, quick trick in order to take something that looks like this and then instantly go and make it like Borderland style, cell shaded tune really quickly and easily. Uh, so, a really fast workflow for how to do that. A nice trick to just kind of create a stylized look really quickly and easily without having to do a lot of tweaking or anything like that. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get started. I do want to say that today is the last day. You have one day left uh, to get the 40% off the Mind Emotion Workshop bundle. Uh, I've got, you know, all, uh, I've got 10 chapters that you can buy individually, uh, or you can get them all bundled together with the Mind Emotion Workshop, the basic package, and save huge on that. I think you save like $300 uh, if you do buy that right now. So it's $99 for three, three payments of that versus, you know, uh, 500 bucks, or if you buy them all individually, it's like 600 bucks. So save big, uh, and today is the last day to do that. I don't know if it's ever going to be this cheap again. It was kind of like a big launch kind of sale, happy happy baby sale. So definitely check that out to learn like a lot of stuff. It covers a lot. Okay, so let's go ahead and create this cool look. All right, so here's what we do. All right, let's say we've got some kit bash assets here. Let's go to the one that doesn't have the tune shader on it. This little thing is just from um, Sketchfab. And then this is our Kitbash uh, slums project. Right now, uh, with Redshift 3.6, Kitbash does not work. Uh, they haven't updated it to work with Redshift 3.6 yet. So luckily, if you had it in an older save file, it still works. But bringing in new stuff doesn't work yet. I've talked to them. They said they're working on it. But just to use the old version for now. But basically, the guy I talked to on support doesn't have any idea. So, uh, But it's coming eventually. It's kind of lame. But okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. So right now, you know, we've just got our normal effects on here that's obviously the tune shader let's go ahead and take this off we have you know our volumetric we've got depth of field everything like that so that's the best part about redshift tune shader in my opinion is like sketching to, like yes there's some features missing and they're going to add to that and they're going to bring that in in the next update they've already got it in the forums uh the trello card for what they're going to update but the cool thing is is like with sketching tune and everything you're always locked into tune shading with redshift you can make something tune shaded and mix it in with stuff that looks photo real and vice versa. You can do photo real with tune shaded stuff. So you don't have to choose one or the other. So you can like mix and match and do cool stuff like that, which I think is really, really neat. Um, and on top of that, it's just kind of super easy to get a nice clean look. All right. So we've got our scene here. Everything's looking pretty good. So all we got to do is just say create material tune. Okay. We've got our node here. And all we have to do is go to the tune material. We're going to take our base color, take it all the way down. Then we're going to go down here to the geometry and go to the opacity color. And we're going to type in about 85%. So basically, this is going to just allow it to be a little transparent. Like, just kind of think of it as instead of setting it to, like, um, just be on top of it on a layer, it's going to be set to, like, screen or something like that. Okay. Uh, so there we go. Did I say that? Yeah, 85%. Cool. And that's it. So now, now all we have to do is select all the stuff in our scene. Um, and you could, you know, be a little more careful about it and just do uh, the things you want. We'll take some of this stuff off. Um, dome light, stuff like that. But we want the bike. We don't need area lights or cameras. But we do want all of our geometry. And with all this selected, we're just going to right click and say apply. We just right clicked our tune shader. It's it applies. So what that's going to do is that's going to put it on top of everything. So rather than like trying to open up every single material and transform it into a tune shader kind of thing and do all this blending and matching, we're just going to use the power of material stacking and just overlay tune on top of it. So now we've done that. Let's go ahead, open this render view back up 
and take a look at what that looks like. Total darkness. But that's okay. Just wait for it to kind of come back in. Because that's the thing with Toon Shader, whatever, for whatever reason, Toon Shader is just like kind of darker. So before, you know, we still get all of our lighting and stuff come in here and we can wait for this to render and you'll kind of see it. But what I want to do is I want to go to my camera, go to optical, and I'm just going to bring up that exposure. Um, normally, you know, it's really set to whatever. I had it down lower because I had the tune down. But there it goes. So you can see it's just bringing up the exposure on your camera, whether it was at zero, you know, increase it past zero, vice versa. But just brightening everything up kind of keeps the lighting balance you had uh, and then also just allows it to be this nice tune shader style. So there we go. We've got fog. We've got depth of field. We've got all this stuff that we have built in. It's like super cool about Redshift, but we also have this cool tune style. So now you have this really neat effect. Uh, the other thing I would say it's just on top of everything. So if you want to, uh, you can come in here and adjust the, you know, you could put certain things and make them shinier or less shiny, you know, like just pick them out and you would just, you know, basically you would create a different tune layer and put that over top of whatever material you wanted to be shinier and stuff like that. So if you want, you would, you know, affect the roughness and stuff here and do that. But we can go to the contour if you want your lines to be, you know, a different color or whatever. But by default, it looks pretty good. And I'm pretty happy with the way this kind of creates a nice tune look like really quickly and easily. It looks kind of like something from Borderlands or Sandland or something now, which is really, really cool. All right. And you can adjust. You can play around with the opacity and stuff, of course, uh, and stuff like that. But yeah, so it's the super, super quick, easy way to do that. Uh, so the last thing I would say is you, you need to make sure you compensate for exposure uh, because for whatever reason, the tune shading stuff requires a little more finesse. But I mean, the cool thing is like we can come in here and, you know, look around and just get a completely different look. Let's look at this like uh, machine laundry mat here. Do, do, do. Let's go ahead and turn off our bokeh real quick just so we can see it. And we'll turn off our fog. Just so it's a little flatter kind of. There we go. And you can see it's just like instantly this really nice, cool tune look. But yeah, I mean, that's awesome. Like, the, everything looks really good and clean, and we didn't have to do anything. You know, we just stacked on a tune thing on top, and it gave us this really cool style. So that's a really fun way. You know, it's not like super tune shadery, but it is just a really cool trick that you can do, do to create this really cool style really quick and easy. Now, the last thing I would say, uh, suggest to do is, is if you are going to use depth of field and stuff, I'll click the focus right here. Um, what I would suggest is actually using uh, for your bokeh to use an image. Uh, one thing is you want to set your shutter speed to 180. That's kind of the most filmic. And then for the bokeh, you can use an image and use an RGB wheel. Uh, if you could just Google that real quick. RGB bokeh. Images. Yeah. So can you see this on the screen? Yeah. See this over here on my screen? I'll bring it up on the main screen. Why not? This guy right here. Just you know, download that, load that into the image here in the bokeh, and that's going to give you kind of that into the Spider-Verse vibe where when things are out of focus, they're not just blurry, they're also chromatically aberrated. I don't know if that's the right way to say that, but it gives it that cool RGB split when things get more out of focus, which gives it this really, really cool cartoon look. Second tip I would say, let's say we have a just a new tune shader thing and you just want this to be applied over everything and you want it to be like this nice flat white, tune shader, whatever color you want, and you want it to be one thing, all you're going to do is go into the render settings, go down here to effect, and add material override, which is going to add it up here. And then inside this, you can just choose your material. You just use a clicker dropper, choose that tune material. And now whenever you render view, it's going to override everything with just a straight up tune shader. So there you go. Now you can see like with that chromatic aberration and the depth of field, I mean, it's just a really cool thing that you that you couldn't do easily before in Redshift. So there you go. So that's going to allow you to, you know, give you uh, the entire, the control you want to, to do whatever you need to do. Turn off Bokeh. We can zoom out, whatever. And that's just going to apply it on the whole scene. And that's just really cool that we can just come in here and make... Like, this is a really good way if you want to do, like, a cool swipe, you know, like, from concept to whatever. So, 
you know, I think that's really cool for blocking out and stuff. It's just kind of satisfying to look at. And then, of course, when you're done with that, and you don't want to do that anymore, just uncheck material override, and it'll go back to how it was. But yeah, let's take a look at some of the scenes just a little bit more. And this works with anything. Quixel assets, you know, anything that has textures and stuff, you can just throw this on absolutely anything, cars, whatever. And it all looks really good and satisfying right off the bat, which is really cool. So yeah, it's really fun to like come in here and look at very small, minute parts like this and just see like, okay, what's this going to look like with Tune Shader? Anything with these hard edges and stuff, like it just, that's cool, right? I don't know. I think it's neat, but you're waiting a long time for Tune Shader. Yes, it's got some uh, things missing, but honestly, it does what I need it to do, which is this, basically. I want it to just be drag and drop onto something and make it look cell shaded which is all I ever wanted very cool and it still works with everything else redshift so super super cool so yeah hopefully you enjoyed this uh we'll do more tutorials uh man look at that that's awesome okay yeah anyway super fun let me yo come into the discord it's free and share the stuff you make. I love seeing what you guys make, especially from the Mind Emotion Workshop and just stuff from my tutorials. I love it, love it, love it. So make sure to show me and share with the group and the community and everything because it's awesome. And one more thing I want to make sure I cover, this is a different scene, uh, is uh, something you may have to troubleshoot, which is when you use this method, it's going to overwrite basically anything that has transmissive or transparency on it. So there's an easy way to fix it. So like in this scene, which uh, it's really fun, to mix the two, you know, we've got a realistic looking field, but a cartoon helicopter. Uh, we'll grab our background back here and, you know, let's just apply our tune shader to that too. Why not? Uh, because stuff from Quixel Bridge with tune shader on there, like, it's just going to look cool. Uh, let's take a look at that real quick. But then you can see my windows and stuff in my helicopter have been grayed out and they should be see through. So let's go ahead and go inside of my helicopter. Uh, I have this really cool fisheye lens set up in there. And it should be pretty dark because there's not really going to be any light coming into the windows because of our tune shader in there. So you can see we're not getting any light coming through our windows. So let's fix that. All we got to do is inside of our helicopter here, let's go ahead and normally inside anything that's made like this, uh, we're going to have stuff like windows and things selected. Normally they're going to be part of the body and you're going to look through these tags where we're going to find trim, details, trim, 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 and you hover over them or click them and they'll tell you. Normally they're near the end. We've got body floor, panels, interior, worn. Atlas is going to be things that have um, decals, basically, and so is heli translucent, which is going to be uh, the the glass and stuff. So double click that and you can see that that actually selects our polygons here in our windows. So all we have to do now is once we have that selected is right click that and go to split. Very cool. And that's going to create a copy of that helicopter for us. Okay. So after you split it, you can see it created body point one, and that is just our glass. Now we can go back to the original body and just delete that selection. Now, obviously we'll need to go in and do our door and stuff too. If you want that, those are different objects, but this is what you could do. So now what we can do is we have, you know, our normal body here and then our, just our glass here. And we just come in here to our material in our tune you could add a different tune do a different opacity whatever you want or you can just delete the tune shader off of the glass and that's just basically going to bring in all that transmissive values and everything back into the scene uh, without any issues just select tune shader and everything else but then you'll have your glass so we'll take a look at that and uh, but that's one way to troubleshoot that issue is you just split it or disconnect it whatever you want to do and uh, you just delete it out of the original so you have a copy of it and you make that one not have the tune shader effect on it there you go. Now you can see that we actually have our glass here and we've got all the tune shader stuff inside of our control panel and stuff. Again, we didn't do the door and stuff, but we've got the glass on the top and the lights coming through and everything's bouncing around like normal redshift, but we have this cool tune shader display on that. So a really cool way to fix and mix uh, realistic stuff with non-realistic stuff. Um, very, very fun and cool. Pretty cool. Cool. So hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, uh, please give leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment, uh, and let me know what else you guys want to see and have any questions about or anything. But it's really cool to be able to combine these things. I just thought it'd be nice to rather than share about you know how to deep dive into the tune shader node, but just like a really quick way to stylize your scenes very quickly without really 
you know, a lot of tweaking. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed that and understand some possibilities and stuff and get you thinking about some creative things you might want to do. All right. Cool. See you next time.